Hey folks, how are y'all doing today? I appreciate you being with us. And as we start today, we are going to have information to release later this afternoon on another case that manifested overnight that I think you'll be interested in. Maybe two more cases that manifested overnight. But let's get on to this one. We, uh, it's an honor that we're joined today by the colonel and his and one of his staff from Border Patrol who was active in this investigation for us. As you know, our federal partners are very, very important when we start working what we call national and international drug smuggling or drug trafficking rings. We were also assisted by DEA, Central Florida High Intensity Drug Trafficking Group, the state attorney's office obviously is going to prosecute this case at a statewide level, and the Florida Highway Patrol assisted us. And here's what occurred. In 2015, we did Operation Numero Uno. It was a telephone intercept of organized meth dealers, and we ended up with 11 arrests. It was a hugely successful investigation. We gathered a lot of information from that case, which led us to our next investigation in 2016. In September, we began with a search warrant, I'm sorry, with a intercept warrant for telephones. And between September and October, about two months, we intercepted a lot of calls dealing with trafficking and methamphetamine. This one was named Operation Numero Dos. The primary person that was our target, who is a major meth dealer in the Central Florida area, was Ignacio Munoz. This is a bad guy. This guy deals a lot of meth. Did I mention to you that he is an illegal alien from Mexico? We're going to talk in great detail about his status as an illegal alien from Mexico in a few minutes. But he had direct contact with the supplier of methamphetamine from Mexico. The supplier sent the meth from Mexico to Dallas, Texas, to the metro area, whereby then there were couriers, Maria, Jose, Federico, and Ronald, all listed on our chart here, who couried the drugs and money back and forth between the Dallas metro area and Polk County. There was also Willis Bullard, which dealt in ounces of methamphetamine. So they had an elaborate system going in this area. And please understand that whenever we took off a lot of folks, 11 to be exact, in Operation Numero Uno, then there were opportunities to move into that market to flush out that market. So as part of this investigation, we were able to wrap up and arrest Ignacio. We also have five of his associates arrested. In fact, Maria, Jose, Federico, and Ronald were all arrested in the metro area of Dallas. They've been transported back to the county jail in Bartow. There's a couple outstanding, and this is important. The first one I want to point out to you is Kevin Brown. Kevin Brown is 36 years of age. There's outstanding warrants for his participation with the Munoz trafficking operation. Listen to me, folks. Kevin is 36 years old. He has 37 previous felonies. 28 previous misdemeanors, 11 failures to appear, and he's been to state prison on five different occasions. He's at large. 
we think in hi the Highlands County frost proof area. If you see this guy, if you know where he is, if you'll let us keep him in jail over Christmas by calling Crime Stoppers, we'll give you some Christmas money or New Year's money, cash money, a thousand dollars just to tell us where this rascal is because he needs a Christmas present from us a ride to the county jail. He's a bad man and he needs to be locked up. And then there's Tamara Smith. She's 55. You'd think she'd learn to behave by 55 years old. But she sells drugs to street dealers. She's from the Lake Wales Frostproof area, but we think she's in the Ocala area right now. She's got seven previous felonies and ten misdemeanors. This is the only two we need to arrest in order for us to have wrapped up this particular operation. Call us at Crime Stoppers. We'll even pay $1,000 to get Tamara locked up because we think she needs to be in jail for Christmas. And I promise, we'll feed them pressed ham or pressed turkey on Christmas Day. So let's talk about Ignacio a minute. He's 43. He's illegally here from Mexico, as I said before. And here's the deal. Now, if it's not enough that he was here illegally originally, he was arrested in a cocaine. He pled gu guilty, entered a plea deal, and went to state prison. When he got out of state prison, they deported him to Mexico. Well, lo and behold, did he stay in Mexico? Oh, no. He didn't stay in Mexico. He came back to the United States. He armed himself with a lot of weapons, and he went back to dealing meth. He came back into the country illegally. And this is what they used to protect themselves, and this is what our deputies and our federal agents and our state agents face when we have to go back out and investigate and go back and rearrest someone who should not have been in the country, someone who has been deported and is back dealing meth again. Now what's important about that? What's important is if you look to see President Obama's commuting sentences. He's calling them low-level offenders, nonviolent offenders. Ladies and gentlemen, Ignacio Munez is a poster child for the type sentences that President Obama is currently commuting. And of the 1,176 commuted sentences, are you ready for this? The President of the United States commuted 211 people that were locked up for firearms charges. You see this? They were in possession of and used a firearm and or used a firearm during the commission of a felony and the President of the United States has locked them up. I mean, I'm sorry, has let them go. The President of the United States let 211 people commute their sentences on firearms charges, either possession during the commission of a felony or possession by a convicted felon. Now, at the same time, he wants to tell you we need common sense gun laws. Let me get this right, Mr. President. You're, let, you're letting the criminals out of jail that we've already arrested and convicted for firearm offenses. 
But at the same time, you want the law-abiding citizens to have more gun restrictions. I think you got that backwards. This is the kind of person that they're commuting today. So, I've got a message for the new president, too. President Trump, once this guy gets out of federal or state prison, and we're going to send him there for a long time because our prosecutors at the state attorney's office are great, this guy needs to be on your bus or your plane or your train or however it is and get him out of this country. But if you don't build a wall, he's not going to stay out of the country because he's making too much money trafficking in methamphetamine in this country. So build your wall, and I got some inmate labor I'll send to help do that if you need it. And two, make sure that guys like that with criminal histories are put out of this country because they're the ones that's terrorizing the good people of the United States. And this is the weapons they're using. It's simple. Folks, this is not this is not rocket science, but it's much more important. It's much more important to understand we need to keep methamphetamine away from our kids. It's important to understand that the people we fight, the people that hurt people, it's all over this white crystal stuff called meth and cocaine and heroin. And while I'm talking about heroin, we plan to have a release later today. We served search warrants late into the evening and seized a lot of heroin. And if you don't think heroin is not killing, then you live under a rock someplace. But we seized a lot of heroin last night. Guess what else we seized last night? Guns. More guns. So we'll have that ready this afternoon. Our folks worked through the night. It was a remarkable investigation. It actually turned up more heroin and more guns than we initially intended. So any questions? Did he have a commuted sentence? Was he one of them? Did, he did not have a commuted sentence, but this is the poster child of what, of what the President of the United States and the White House people are calling low-level, nonviolent offenders. He probably, since he had experience getting here the first time, probably came the second time. They hire smugglers or they cross the border and take their chances at various weak points. And where was he he was arrested once again in Lake Wells. He came back to Lake Wells after we already caught him here. And let me tell you something, folks, and we have some of the reps here now. The Border Patrol agents do a phenomenal job, but they've got to have the tools and the equipment and the support out of the White House. And if you want to reduce the crime, if you want to make the folks safe in the United States, stop the criminals from coming across the border and stop those with a criminal record that are here and send them back to Mexico or wherever their state of origin is. And I'm drawing a, di let me differentiate here. I'm not talking about people that came here illegally, even though they should have come here illegally just to do better for their family. And they've come here and they've worked really, really hard and they've stayed out of trouble. And yes, they're, in, they're here inappropriately. That's a separate issue. I am talking about the criminals in Mexico that have come here and figured this deal out and he's one of them. 
There's a lot of money to make here. And all they do is let you plea out and deport you. And heck, I'll just come back. And I'll take you back to a, a lady that we did the same thing to not long ago. We did a press conference. Not only did she come back, but she was getting about $900 a month in federal assistance, government assistance to be here illegally after we'd convicted her, deported her, she came back, got federal assistance, and went back in the drug trade. So if we're not going to do anything about it, why shouldn't they do it? We need to help our colleagues from the Border Patrol and our federal authorities and our lo local law enforcement authorities. Send them to prison, which is what our state attorney's office is going to do, and then get them out of here. All the meth is made in Mexico? This is made in Mexico. And then it's brought to Dallas, and then the carrier or bringing it here. So it's being couriered from some source to Dallas, and we picked it up as a result of the wiretap, and we found that it was coming out of Dallas to here. Now, here's what's interesting, and I'm, I'm repeating. I don't have the empirical evidence before me, but they tell me one of the reasons that we're not seeing a lot of these one-pot labs anymore is because this dope out of Mexico is so much better and cheap and easy to get and I'm told they make it in labs the size of Walmart's down there. It's been basically for you obviously announcing all this operation. Um, what is happening here in Polk County there? I mean you have one practically every week. Why are people County and committing yeah, they're, they're not coming here to commit crime. We've got the best detectives, and we're seeking them out. The people we arrest here mostly are from other places, but we don't care where you're from. You're still victimizing people in the United States, and we're going to chase you. We're going to chase you to the ends of the earth. And by the way, while I'm, after, while I'm at this, the Marshal Service... Another one of the federal partners we have is going down, I think, in January to Australia and bring us one back from there that we arrested. We've had one in lockup in Australia for four years fighting extradition. Well, that rascal's coming to Polk County, so stand by for 2017 news. We'll go to the ends of the earth to chase you no matter where you are if you're trying to deal dope in and through this central Florida, Polk County area. In Polk County, uh, on the drug scale, I guess, where does meth stand compared to other drug problems? Meth, meth not only in Polk County, but through, through the state and for the most part through the nation, is still the most popular of the illegal drugs because you get a longer high than cocaine and Typically, it's, it's that price or less, less than cocaine. So meth is still very popular, and, it's, and it's, a, it's a horrible drug, not only physiologically and psychologically on the person that uses it, but on the family. Do you know the street value of some of the stuff you're looking at? Like the What's the street value on this? Right there. And, and then if you in. step on it on the street and sell it, you can, you know, mix it and blend it. By the time, by the time, if you work it all out, it, it's probably more than that. But that much would sell directly on the street before they got to stomping it and then try to cover their cost. 300 grand. 300 grand by a guy who's already been convicted once of trafficking and deported and he came back. These Border Patrol agents can't do it by themselves. We can't do it by ourselves. We've got to have the support of the community. And I think we saw the support of the community at the polls in November when they elected Donald Trump and he said, I'll build a wall. Well, Mr. President-elect, here's your sign, the reason you need to. In recent weeks, 
kind of uh, said that maybe it won't be a physical wall. Maybe it'll be some type of wall. Maybe it'll be a wall and a fence. Uh, what's your take on that? I'm not surprised because when they built the wall in Israel, the wall in Israel, as it was called by the media, is not a complete wall. In some areas, it's fence. But I had the opportunity to go to Israel and study anti-terrorism tactics. And they built the wall down there to keep the terrorists out. Because if you remember back in the day, there was bus bombing after bus bombing, and they actually had armed guards at the, at the front of every business throughout Jerusalem and the other cities of Israel. You don't have that today. You still have some terrorist activity and always will there. But when they built that wall, and part of it is a fence, guess what? All of that fell precipitously. The same thing will happen here. And I'm a big supporter of the fence or the wall. We'll call it the wall. But if it's a fence and